Fiat's comeback to the States hasn't been an easy one. When the company first made the trek across the border back in 2012, they managed to move a little over 40,000 of their cheeky little 500 hatchback. Now, over the years, Americans' taste for cars certainly hasn't changed. And unfortunately for Fiat, neither has the 500 hatchback, with the biggest change coming in 2016. So in today's video, they've loaned me a 2019 500 Lounge equipped with the new 1.4 liter turbocharged engine. So is Fiat's cheeky little 500 still a relatively desirable small car? That's what we're here to find out. So as you can see, the design of the 500 really hasn't changed. Fiat gave it a slight refreshing for 2016, but in 2018, basically all the 500s got a refreshed front end because Fiat got rid of the old 1.4 liter naturally aspirated engine. This is essentially the fascia we've seen on the Abarth and the turbo models, which was discontinued back in 2016. You can see the cute little bug eye headlights are basically standard here. You have a, a halogen projector headlight, the incandescent turn signal, and then halogen fog lights at the lower end. Unfortunately, if you guys are looking for LED headlights, Lights, they're just not available on a 500 at any price. Now, I do particularly like the new front fascia because it's got bigger cooling for the turbocharged engine. It definitely has still a very cutesy, unique look to it, but I'm really interested to see what Fiat decides to do with this thing for the next generation. Now, another, sh another change they did in 2018 are these new wheels. These are 16-inch wheels, which are standard across the board. Fiat had to fit every 500 with 16-inch wheels, getting rid of the 15-inch wheels because the turbo engine necess necessitated larger brakes, um, so the wheels helped to clear now this is seriously a small car. It's about a foot shorter than something like a Honda Fit or a Toyota Yaris, a wheelbase at 90.6 inches long and 139.6 inches in overall length. This thing seriously is the size of a shoe. Um, it's still a very small car. It's still not quite as small as something like a Smart 4.2, but this is a lot smaller than most Americans uh, really you know, feel comfortable driving around on the open uh, highway. Now at the back, you can see here, the taillight's got a slight refresh for 2016. They're a little bit larger. You have a nice uh, exhaust system that shows off that this is the turbo engine. I'll let you guys actually hear that exhaust. It sounds pretty good. And as you guys heard, it's almost like a little mini Abarth sound. It definitely has a nice mean tone, much better than the base uh, engine that I drove previously. Now, the one thing I don't like is this very large turbo badge that literally looks like it can be picked up at your local Walmart. It just literally just needs to be removed. I just don't like this badge. It looks like an afterthought. Now, opening up the rear cargo area, this one is the hatchback. Fiat also offers a C version that has a convertible top. Uh, what you're looking at is a relatively decent amount of space for something this small, around nine cubic feet of cargo area. The convertible gets that cut in half. These seats also do fold down 60-40, um, so you do help to expand your cargo capacity if you guys need to actually carry some stuff. Underneath this floor, there is no spare tire or anything like that. There's not even really any storage. So um, just keep that in mind if you guys are looking for like a spare tire in this car. So the Fiat 500 may be a tiny car on the outside, but surprisingly the interior has fairly decent amount of room for a car that's the size of a shoe. Now you heard that door. It's a heavy door because it's so large. And it definitely doesn't sound all that great. The whole body actually quivers whenever you shut the door. Now, here's the key fob for the vehicle. No intelligent access push button start. So you have a traditional switchblade key here that pops out. Uh, the key itself feels a little bit on the cheap side, but hey, whatever, it's, a, it's an inexpensive car. Now to start the vehicle up, turn the key like a car from, you know, a long time ago. And then the engine starts right up and you can hear 
that turbo actually sounds good. You can literally hear the exhaust or, or the whistle from the turbo. I'd love to drive the Abarth version of this car. I actually have it. Now, looking at the rest of this cabin, Fiat really hasn't made any changes. The ivory colored seats that you're looking at in my tester are manually adjustable and they're like a $250 option. I actually like the you know, red stitching or the red embroidered um, logo here for the 500. It's got really comfortable seats, actually. They do hold you relatively well. These are kind of like an Abarth light for the seats. The dash in here, unfortunately, is all very cheap. Hard touch plastic everywhere. It's got these inconsistent gaps between the panels. Um, the door panels here are also hard touch plastic. They just feel really cheap. Same with the door handles, which are these chrome plated door handles. The window controls are over here. Uh, it's automatic down, but not automatic up. And you can see here, it actually moves that little trim piece around the window control wiggles as I just touch it normally. Now, the infotainment system also is a big disappointment. This is an older Uconnect system. It's only a five inch display. As you can see here, very basic in terms of the controls. Um, there's your you know traditional buttons over here, hard buttons. It's got a TomTom -tom navigation system, which is just really a huge joke. You are likely to find a better system in the aftermarket. And you can see it's also very slow. The radio, I'm surprised that my tester has satellite radio, which is nice. You get that as part of the lounge model. There's also Bluetooth. Bluetooth audio, Bluetooth streaming audio and whatnot. But again, this screen, they should have just put a 8.4 inch screen here. They could have really taken this up and just gotten rid of the hard buttons here or relocated it somewhere. Um, there's a dedicated sport button here that also changes the way the gauges look, which gives you an interesting view. It gets rid of the MPG and gives you a turbo uh, gauge instead. You have a single zone automatic climate control over here with basically single level heated seats. Um, you have the controller for the six speed automatic here, which gives you a manual mode, no panels on the wheel. If you put the vehicle to reverse, you have a backup camera, which was made standard for 2018, um, which again, it's very small. It has rear parking sensors and trajectory. That's really the only driver assistance tech that Fiat offers in this car. They simply just don't offer uh, that feature, uh, any like automatic braking, anything like that. It's just not available on a car this small. Look, going into the glove compartment, you can see it's actually a fairly large size. Uh, it is not damp, or it is not lined with felt, but it is damped. Surprisingly, I am I'm liking how, how large the golf compartment is. Down here, you can see there are two cup holders for the front, two in the rear. It's got a traditional pull style handbrake. It's got your aux port and your USB down over there. Don't expect to find Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It's just not available. Um, there are two little armrests here that fold down for each the driver and the front passenger seat. And then above me, um, this glass roof comes standard on the lounge. And then my tester has uh, an option to make it a sunroof for 750 bucks. Now, as you can see, there is a back seat. So let me hop back there and show you guys how miserable it is. So surprisingly, this thing actually has a back seat. So for entertainment purposes, I'm gonna get back there and show you how, uh, if it actually is usable. Now there you saw there's a pretty, there's a good lever here that slides the seat forward and it actually reveals a pretty good amount of space to get back here. So let me get back here and I'll move over to the driver's side here because this is where I have the seat to drive. Surprisingly, you know, it's uh, it's cramped. I mean, I'd have the driver kind of recline the seat forward a little bit, but my five foot seven frame actually fits relatively nicely in here. My head is touching the roof line a little bit, which is annoying considering there's a bump out here. It's supposed to give you more headroom. Um, but overall, I guess if you are shorter than me or around my height, this is actually tol tolerable on short trips, which gives the um, 500 an, an advantage over something like a Smart 4.2. The materials are all hard touch plastic. There are two mat pockets in the seat uh, back, which are nice. But other than that, it's a back seat that you're only really gonna use to put people back here that you don't like. So underneath the hood of the latest 500, this is where Fiat has made the biggest change back in 2018. Now, basically that old 1.4 liter naturally aspirated engine, it's gone. And its place is essentially a detuned version of the Abarth's 1.4 liter multi-air turbocharged engine. Now, Fiat actually offered this engine in a non-Abarth trim from 2013 to 2016. Uh, it makes 135 horsepower here and 150 foot-pounds of torque. That's an increase of 34 horsepower over the base model that I last drove uh, for the 2017 model year. Now, this is a very small car uh, and it only weighs around 2,400 pounds. Compared to the Abarth, this makes 135 horsepower, the Abarth makes 160, so it's down a little bit a little bit of power. Now, in terms of the transmission, Fiat, Fiat offers a uh, five-speed manual transmission, or uh, my tester has an optional six-speed automatic for like a thousand bucks. Fuel economy is unfortunately pretty disappointing for a car this small. It's only rated at 24 in the city, 32 on the highway. And then to add even more insult, it actually recommends that you use premium gas. Now this thing does have a relatively small, like 10 gallon gas tank, it's front wheel drive. So I've actually never driven the turbo 500. Let's get out on the road and see how it performs. 
So the last Fiat 500 I drove had that base 1.4 liter naturally aspirated engine. It had a five speed manual, but unfortunately it was still slow. Zero to 60 times took like 10 seconds. And believe it or not, this turbo version has eluded me ever since it came out from 2013 to 2016. Still haven't driven it on Barth yet. So first getting into this turbo model, I'm definitely noticing just how much louder the engine and the exhaust is in this vehicle. It's still a really unrefined engine. It just produces some vibration through the, pa uh, the steering wheel, through the pedals. And then when you put your foot down, it sounds pretty decent, honestly. Jesus, this thing, <laughs> it gets really buzzy above uh, 4,000, 5,000 RPM. But I have to tell you, this new turbo engine or this turbo engine really moves. It hustles along the 500 pretty damn well. The ride is still bouncy and jiggly because it's a very small car with, you know, a 90.6 inch wheelbase. This is pretty tiny. Uh, thankfully, mine has the 16 inch wheels. I can't imagine how rough riding the uh, Abarth model is with the 17 inch wheels. But I have to say the zero to 60 time probably improves to around the low eight second range, which is acceptable. It's still not fast. It's not gonna blow the doors off of things. But um, the six speed automatic is kind of to blame. It's, a, it's an ASIN six speed automatic transmission. It's actually built in Japan. I looked at the window sticker. I'm just not happy with the slow, sluggish, jerky shifts. Um, it just feels like it's a step behind. Uh, newer, newer vehicles have much better transmissions, especially when you, you know, drive those new eight speeds and whatnot. But the handling of the 500 is definitely not what I'd call sporty. I mean, this is a small car, so it feels nimble. However, the steering doesn't offer much feedback. The body leans considerably. And the car just feels like a clown car. It feels a little unsettling, a little unsafe. Thankfully, it finally has some passing power, so I do enjoy the passing power that this thing finally gives you. It's nice, uh, it's acceptable. I would actually still love to drive the Abarth model, but there's just something about the 500 that reminds you constantly that it hasn't aged well. It, it uh, has a rough ride, it's noisy in here. I'm literally having to speak up because I can't hear myself speak. Uh, the visibility is good in here, I will say that. You have these nice side mirrors, good view out of the front. It's a tiny car, so look behind you and there's practically the ass of this car. Uh, no driver assistance tech, no blind spot monitoring, no forward collision warning no uh, adaptive cruise control, um, just parking sensors and a rear backup camera, that's it. And in a car this small, I'd argue I'd want those safety tech features. I'd want something that makes me feel like I'm driving a safe vehicle. And I just don't feel all that safe in this car just because you know everything's kind of out and about, you're, everything's bigger than you. And then when people cut you off, you're kind of just like, oh, they're bullying me because I'm in this teeny tiny car that's the size of a shoebox. But um, the one thing that's also really terribly flawed with this car is the driving position. The steering wheel doesn't telescope, so I can't get it to extend far enough. I've got to push the seat back because my legs are too close. And then I've got to extend my arms out and drive like this because the car is uh, just not tailored for Americans' uh, physiques. And honestly, I'm five foot seven, like 170 pounds. So it's interesting how this car just doesn't really fit me either. But I mean, most of these tiny micro cars don't really excel on the highway. The 500 isn't really happy here, but you know, it's tolerable just because it has decent power. You can take it out on the highway and it's not bad because it has decent passing power, but let's take this off ramp here. I'm gonna slow down a little bit more because the car feels a little tippy. I don't really trust it. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> it just feels so tall. Like I'm gonna roll the damn thing over if I go any faster. So. I can take this turn much faster than some other cars. It's just not really confident inspiring, to say the least. Now I'm gonna put it into its sport mode over here that basically turns the fuel economy gauge into a, ta um, a boost gauge, which doesn't really show you any useful information, but let's try to floor it here from a stop. That's floored, a little bit of wheel spin. <laughs> the transmission's lagging. You can hear a little bit of turbo whistle oh, from the turbo. But I have to say, it gets up to speed nicely. You just don't really want to rev it out to 60 or 6,000 RPM. It doesn't like being at that range. So it's not a rev happy engine. It's a buzzy, unrefined engine that has, you know, good power. I have to admit, this is the engine that the 500 should have launched with. Um, 
it's just the rest of the car is kind of a letdown. Now, in terms of fuel economy, I had mentioned that it's pretty paltry for a small car. And in my week's worth of testing, I've only been averaging about 25 miles to the gallon. Uh, and premium gas is recommended. So that's kind of another insult there. I mean, this car is so small, it weighs 2,400 pounds. It should easily get 40 mpg. And I have a Corolla hatch the same week of this car, and that car is easily getting 40 mpg. So too bad. Um, it definitely <laughs> needs some work. I mean, it's got the right amount of Italian charisma to it, but uh, I would really love to see Fiat come out with a next generation that's all electric, like all the safety tech. It needs to make me feel safe. I don't feel safe driving it. I feel like I'm in a rolling death trap considering everyone else is so much bigger than me. But other than that, if you want something cute, charming, and easy to park, uh, this one is uh, a lot better than the smart car, I will say that. So at the beginning of this video, I had mentioned that Fiat sold a little over 40,000 units when the 500 first came back to America in 2012. Unfortunately for them, they also only managed to sell about 5,000 units in all of 2018. And that represents a huge decrease. The sales have been dropping by like 50% almost every year. So Fiat honestly needs to do something with the 500 drastic, a full redesign, something to make people want to buy this car again, because surprisingly, it's a relatively fun car to drive. That turbo engine is a huge, huge, upgrade and it's honestly something that Fiat should have done a long time ago. It really improves the acceleration. It sounds good. This thing is still really fun to drive. It just needs a lot of work in terms of the technology, in terms of the safety. Um, for a small car, I kind of just feel a little unsettled driving, especially with everyone else being so large around me. It needs all that driver assistance tech. It needs an upgraded infotainment system. It needs a light, a better ride quality because this car is small. I can't imagine what it's like to drive this thing with the Abarth in the Abarth trim with the 17 inch wheels. But overall, Fiat has a small car, a micro car basically, that is superior to me versus the Smart for two. It's just a matter of fact of them innovating this car, making it a much more interesting vehicle. I think honestly, Fiat needs to just go the electrification route. If they could really come back with a 500E that has the range of a Tesla with the acceleration and you know the diminutive sides, it's something that I think a lot of Americans may find to be super appealing. Now, if you guys are looking to purchase one of these 500s, how much does it cost? Well, when Fiat added the turbo engine is standard, they actually increase the price. It starts at $16,300, which is a $400 increase over the previous model. My tester being the lounge starts at around $19,500, but it's got a pretty good amount of options from the automatic, the sunroof, to the Beats audio system, um, to the navigation. This one all in stickers for $24,500, which is a pretty expensive amount of money for a car, the, a car the size of a shoe. But keep that in mind, if you guys wanted the Caprio version, that's like another $1,500. The most expensive I've seen these can actually touch $30,000, which is just a ludicrous amount of money. But keep in mind, I have seen a lot of Fiat dealers seriously discount the crap out of this thing if you guys are actually looking to purchase one. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2019 Fiat 500 Turbo Lounge. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Line underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please. Oh, you okay? <laughs> I was like, oh shit, <laughs> that's a great flooper off. Okay, let's go from.